hello everyone welcome back with another video in this video we'll be discussing about what is generative ai so before discussing about generative ai first of all uh, let me introduce some of the real world application of the generative ai you are using in your day-to-day -day life so i think you know about chat gpt google gemini meta llama right so these are the application you are using in your day-to-day -day life i hope everyone has used chat gpt at least right since at chat gpt what we can perform we can give any kinds of prompt we can uh, do the conversation we can do the summarization we can generate the content we can generate the code we can do the text summarization any kinds of task we can perform in the chat gpt right so similar wise google has developed their own product called gemini okay google gemini so with the help of google gemini also we can perform the same things the things actually we perform usually in our chat gpt so the same thing we can perform with the help of meta llama 2 as well that means chat gpt is developed by open ai uh, google gemini is developed by google and llama is developed by meta okay meta ai that means facebook so all the tech giants companies are working on generative ai day by day they are improving this particular generative ai they are uh, bringing actually different different large language model and they are uh, launching different different application okay for the users nowadays all the companies are using generative ai to implement their product so currently in the market uh, generative ai having more popularity so that's why you have to know what is generative ai exactly how generative ai works and definitely if you want to work uh, in the current job market you have to know about this generative ai you have to learn about this generative ai okay this is the idea see all the application i showed you here like chat gpt google gemini meta llama so they are using something called large language model in the back end okay with the help of large language model they are able to perform these are the operation now first of all let's try to understand what is generative ai exactly see generative ai is nothing but generative ai generates new data based on training samples generative model can generate image text audio video and so on data as an output so i think you have already worked with machine learning deep learning computer vision and so on right so there you used to use something called discriminative model and what is discriminative model based on some input actually it will predict the output of that particular data okay so this was actually discriminative model and to train the discriminative model actually we used to use something called label data that means that means whenever we used to prepare the data for the training we used to prepare the let's say uh, input data as well as the output data that means you have to pass the x data and y data that means input and output both okay and if you uh, give input and output both it will align the relationship between input and output it will run the pattern from the data then it will be able to predict something on top of the test data so that was the idea in the discriminative model that means in the prediction model right but generative models are different okay so generative models can generate a new data based on the training samples so here you will be giving some training sample which is called unstructured data so based on this training sample data it will try to generate some new data that means inside gen ai whenever you are giving any kinds of unstructured data as an input your generative model will try to understand this unstructured data it will learn the pattern from the unstructured data and it will try to generate something from that particular sample you are giving okay this is the idea and the output can be anything it can be text it can be audios it can be videos and so on okay as i already told you inside generative ai we not only work with the text but also we also work with the image videos audios and so on okay so all the unstructured data can be used inside generative ai this is the idea so that's why i have written generative ai is a very huge topic inside generative uh, ai actually we are having generative image model as well as the generative language model that means you can work with the languages that means text you can also work with the images videos okay and audios so there is another model you can consider generative audio model but at the end you are converting this audio to the text representation that means language representation that's why i haven't mentioned this audio model separately okay this is the idea because audio is nothing but it's a frequency and from the frequency we can convert to the textual representation okay this is the idea there are so many api you will get even google has the api you can uh, let's say convert speech to text okay with the help of speech to text you can easily convert any kinds of audio to textual representation okay this is the idea that means what is generative ai generative ai is nothing but it generates new data based on the training sample you are giving and generative model can generate any kinds of uh, output whether it can be image it can be text or it can be audios okay now let me tell you how they got the idea like how this generative model can work see this idea had taken from real life only let's say uh if i give you 10 different cat book okay let's say if i give you 10 different cats book and if i tell you just try to read all the 10 different cat book let's say you have read all the 10 different cat books now if i'm asking anything related cats okay you will be able to give me the answer because you have already studied about the cats like uh, 10 different books i have given and 
this was the enough data for you right to learn about the cats so that's why if i'm asking anything related to the cats you will be able to give me the response so here you have become one cat model okay you have become one cat model and that is why if i'm giving any kinds of question you will be able to give me the response okay so similar concept applied in the generative ai also so they implemented one model called generative model in the generative model they feed actually tons of data that means huge amount of data they uh, trained okay that particular model and then actually they were uh, giving some kinds of question and that particular model was able to give the response okay this is the idea that means here you are feeding uh, tons of unstructured data and your model is able to uh, let, let's say learn the pattern from the unstructured data and there would be a position uh, your model will be able to capable enough to give any kinds of response okay based on the question you are asking now you can ask me why generative models are required see i can give you thousands reasons of the generative model requirement but here i have listed down some of them so the first thing you can consider understand the complex pattern from the data because nowadays you can see people are using unstructured data a lot unstructured data means it can be text data it can be audio data it can be videos data right so this is called actually unstructured data and in today's world actually people are using internet broadly and in in internet actually people are generating huge amount of unstructured data okay they are using different different social media they are using different different platform so that's how actually they are generating tons of unstructured data so that's why it's very hard to understand the pattern from this kinds of unstructured data without traditional machine learning model okay so that's why this generative model comes into picture so it can easily understand the complex pattern from this kinds of unstructured data the second thing you can consider the content generation that means that means your generative model can generate any kinds of content it can generate code it can generate let's say any kinds of story it can generate any kinds of music any kinds of videos now i think nowadays you have seen like uh, there are so many application came in the market so if you give any kinds of prompt it will generate the video for you okay the complete video for you that means it is generating some content okay it is generating some content based on the prompt prompt you are giving and that's how for the content creator also it is becoming one of the very uh, used tool okay for their content generation and all let's say you are a blog writer now you don't need to write the blog from scratch so what you can do you can just pass the topic and your model will generate the blog for you and what you can do you can just modify this particular blog with respect to your requirement and you can publish okay anywhere you can also generate any kinds of videos you can also generate any kinds of reels okay everything is possible nowadays with the help of this generative models okay so that is why content generation is one of the very uh, important let's say features inside generative models okay i can talk about now the third thing you can consider build powerful application as i already told you we are already using uh, tons of powerful application in our day to day life like chat gpt gemini okay then llama so different different actually powerful application we are using in our day to day life and just try to think about when we didn't have this kinds of application we had to complete lots of work actually manually but nowadays we are having this kinds of powerful application now you can do any kinds of work actually in a few seconds okay it is possible let's say if i give you one example as a developer whenever let's say you are getting any kinds of error okay from your let's say application what you can do you can copy that error and you can ask through the chat gpt chat gpt will give you the solution okay how we can solve it but previously when we didn't have any kind of chat gpt what we used to do we used to search that particular error inside google we used to open the stack overflow and we used to see lots of let's say solution then we used to solve that particular uh, let's say error and nowadays actually we are using this kinds of application and it is actually saving uh, lots of our time so we don't have to spend actually lots of time to fix any kinds of bugs uh in a few seconds actually it is possible nowadays uh if we are using this kinds of powerful generative ai based application okay this is the idea those who have already studied about artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning maybe you have already seen this kinds of venn diagram okay this is the venn diagram of our ai the complete ai now you can see machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence deep learning is the subset of machine learning and now here you can see generative ai is the subset of deep learning okay it is the subset of deep learning that means machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence deep learning is the subset of machine learning and generative ai is the subset of deep learning okay this is the complete venn diagram of the complete artificial intelligence okay i hope it is clear now let's try to see the difference between discriminative model and generative model you can see a uh, discriminative model is nothing but it's just a prediction model let's say here you have given two input one is the cat image another is the dog image what your discriminative model will do it will try to predict whether it's a cat image or whether it's a dog image that means you are trying to do some prediction here i think you already use this kinds of model in your deep learning let's say whenever you used to perform something called image classification 
there we had uh, different different model like ResNet 50, Inception V3, right? Mobile Net, VG16. So with the help of this particular model, we can perform the image classification task. On the other hand, generative model can take actually any kinds of sample data, any kinds of noise data. And from that particular noise data, it will generate a complete new image for you. Okay, new data for you. Now let's say here you are passing one noise data. Noise data means it can be any kinds of unstructured data. And what generative model will do, it will try to understand the pattern. Okay, it will try to understand the pattern from these kinds of data. Okay, then it will generate a new data for you, new data point for you. This is the idea. Okay, this is the idea of the generative model. See, I have kept another example here. Let's say, so here we are using distributive model to classify the music type. You can see here we are uh, giving actually different, different music, rock, classical and romantic. So here your distributive model, that means your discriminator deep learning model will try to classify whether it's a rock music whether it's a classical music or whether it's a romantic music. On the other hand, generative model, what it will do? You will just give some music sample, okay? And generative model will try to understand the pattern. It will generate a complete new music for you. Maybe you have already heard of AI has created music. AI has created songs. AI has written story. How? That's how actually they're using something called generative model. They're actually feeding lots of uh, training samples, okay? And this model is learning and it is generating a new content, okay, with respect to the data they are giving. This is the idea of the generative model and the discriminative model. I hope now it is clear. Now if I discuss a little bit low level like how things are working here. See, maybe you have heard of something called supervised learning. Okay, in supervised learning uh, what we do? We give the X data as well as the Y data that means input and output. And here we try to find the relationship between our input and output. Okay, this is called actually supervised learning. And whatever actually let's say uh, discriminative model actually we are using, it is called actually supervised learning. On the other hand, we are having another learning called unsupervised learning. In the unsupervised learning, what we used to perform, we used to perform something called clustering technique. Let's say here, we are only giving the X data, that means the input data. And what my model will try to do, it will try to make a cluster. Let's say this is uh, one cluster, this is another cluster, this is another cluster. That's how it is separated out my data. Okay, that's how it will find out the relationship between the data. Okay, this is the idea. Now you can consider this unsupervised learning as a generative model. So generative model will also work in the same way. So instead of actually uh, finding the relationship, what it will try to do, it will try to make a cluster. Okay, it will try to make a cluster from the unstructured data actually will be feeding. This is actually low level actually uh, understanding I'm giving you how things are working here. But on top of that, they have added some more technique to actually uh, build these kinds of generative AI model. Okay, this is the idea. So in summary, actually you can see generative AI is a subset of deep learning and generative models are trained on huge amount of data as I already told you. While training the generative model, we don't need to provide any kinds of level data. We only give the unstructured input data because whenever uh, you are working with huge amount of data, it's not possible to label the data. Okay, that's why you are giving the unstructured data as an input to the generative model. So here you can see in generative AI, we give the unstructured data to the large language model for the training purpose. And whatever things I explained so far, you can see what your descriptive model will do. It will try to uh, actually predict whether it's a dog image or whether, whether it's a cat image okay by finding the relationship on the other hand your generative model will try to uh, make a cluster okay let's say this is a uh, cat cluster this is a dog cluster okay then uh, with the help of that it will able to generate a new content from you i think you have heard of something called gan the generative adversarial neural network okay so gan is also called generative model okay because here you will be giving noise data and from the noise data itself, it will able to generate a new content. Okay, new data. This is the idea of the GANs. So, so far I told you about generative model, but what exactly this generative model? See, generative model is nothing but it's a large language model, which is also called LLM. See, a large language model is nothing but uh, it's a foundational machine learning model that uses a deep learning algorithm to process and understand the natural language. These models are trained on massive amount of text data to learn patterns and entity relationships in a language. It can be also considered in a image data as well. Okay, not only text data, you can also use LLM for the image as well. Because I told you we are having two kinds of model, uh, generative language model, generative image model. Okay, so you can also use image data here, not only text data. And it is a language model which is responsible for performing tasks such as text to text generation, text to image generation, image to text generation. As I already told you, as I already told you, generative model can support actually all kinds of data. You can generate text to text, you can generate text to image, even you can also generate image to text. Okay, everything is possible with the help of this large language model nowadays. Okay, 
and we also call it as multi-model that means you can perform multiple tasks here not one specific task you can perform multiple tasks like text to text text to image and image to text generation apart from that you can perform uh, some more tasks let's say you can perform uh, language translation you can perform text generation you can perform let's say text classification you can perform sentiment analysis name entity recognition all kinds of tasks you can perform with the help of only one model and which is nothing but our large language model okay and large language model is nothing but our generative model okay this is the complete idea about our generative ai i hope it is clear now now let's try to understand uh, what makes llm so powerful as i already told you in case of llm one model can be used for whole variety of the task okay i, I told you now uh, text generation you can perform chatbot you can perform summarization you can perform translation you can perform code generation you can perform that means whatever task actually you have inside the nlp all the tasks you can perform with the help of one model which is nothing but large language model so that's why we call this llm is so powerful and that makes llm so powerful because in our traditional model whatever model we used to use that means the language model only we can only perform one specific task let's say you are uh, you want to do actually language translation for language translation you need to only train one language translation model that model can't do the code generation or let's say uh, text summarization that model can't perform but if you're using large language model you can perform all kinds of tasks with the top one model only okay so that's why llm is so powerful because of this particular idea so as i already told you if you're using your uh, traditional actually language model it can only perform one specific task at a time let's say you want to build a sentiment analysis so one model you have to train for the sentiment analysis which will only able to do the sentiment analysis whether this particular let's say sentiment is positive neutral or negative let's you want to perform language translation you have to train another model for the language translation and that model will be able to translate any kinds of text okay that means you have created two separate model okay for two separate tasks but if you are using large language model you need to only train one specific model okay and that can perform multiple tasks this is the idea of large language model so let's see some of the large language model so here you can see we are having gemini gpt uh, xlm then we are having t5 llama mistral falcon apart from that there are so many large language models are available over the internet i'm going to discuss even i'm going to show you each and everything so here i just mentioned some of the large language model just to show you but i will tell you uh, how you can see all the large language models are available over the internet even i will also show you uh, how you can access those model and how you can use those model to create your application okay on top of it everything i'll try to clarify so yes guys this is the introduction of generative ai now i think you got the clear cut idea about generative ai like what exactly is generative ai and uh, inside generative ai actually what are the things are available and why it is actually mostly used technology inside any kinds of software product nowadays and inside generative models actually uh, what is uses it is uses something called large language model and don't you worry i'll discuss about large language model uh, in detail like how large language model works and inside that what are the architecture they're using everything i will try to clarify so yes this is the overview of generative ai i hope you got it so thank you for watching this video and i will see you next time